All right, guys, we are out here at the C-Pro and I wanted to take a minute and show you how my transducers are installed. This is not for a normal average installation. I kind of ask a bit more for my transducers. So they're kind of uh, installed aggressively. Right out of the bat, you can see I am very low in the water. Really too low for what uh, most transducers are designed for. But I want to mark fish at 30 plus miles an hour. So I don't mind throwing up a rooster tail and uh, possibly hitting stuff in the water that will kick my transducer up. You can see this is a 3D structure scan transducer. It is mounted very low. So even at full speed, the entire transducer is in the water. I'll start with the transducer almost level because when the boat comes up on plane, it'll lower the transducer. I always wanna make sure the following edge here is the lowest part of the transducer. This increases pressure across the face of the transducer, squeezes out any air bubbles. You can see on the transom where it's mounted, it's very low. Uh, anywhere from the first lifting straight down is where I like to put them. Now, a transducer this size can cause cavitation in your motor, believe it or not. It'll push enough water down that your motor will get some air. So you can see I had it installed here, very low. My motor was cavitating a little bit, so I moved it out. See, it's level. And if I'm not getting the results I want, so I simply push the following edge down a touch. But usually level that low into the water is plenty enough because, like I said, on plane it lifts and it lowers this following edge. Now this here is a TM150. It's an inexpensive chirp transducer. Again, very low, not quite as low as the one here with the stainless steel mount bracket. This is a plastic kick up. You can see it is, the entire transducer is below the bottom of the hull. I don't know if you can tell if I do that or not. But one thing you're gonna notice right off the bat is the angle. It's a very low angle on this transducer. This one here tends to do better with the big wedge installed. So the following edge is very low. I don't get half arches. If you start this low and your arches are in half, your fish arches, then go with the smaller wedge. And if you're still getting half wedges, go with no wedge. Okay, let's move over here to the starboard side. This here is a 275 low high chirp, wide. And uh, this one here, you know, took a little more thinking because it's such a large transducer. I couldn't fit it down here where I'd like to. So it is all, way off to the side here and it's really close to this reverse chine. This is here for stability. I normally wouldn't put a transducer here but with these bay boats, I've had very good luck mounting them on the inside of the lifting strake here. And uh, this transducer here actually does very well here. Again, the entire transducer is below the boat. Not just halfway back, you know. And again, I know it's too low. A lot of people can look at this and say, you're crazy going that low. They're not designed that way. They're not supposed to plow. They're supposed to skim. But again, I'm asking a little bit more out of my transducers. So you can see, completely below the hull here there is no wedge in here this transducer comes with two but you can see the following edge already is low enough without a wedge so start with this and uh, you know if you're getting air or you're not marking the fish you want to see you can lower it a touch you can you know relocate it if you can move it closer to the uh, keel here that's always a good bet of course I have no room here but I want to mark fish at 30 miles an hour. So this does throw up a rooster tail. I mean, this rooster tail will come kicking up here and you can see it behind me. It doesn't bother me. Uh, my boat is a tool. These transducers are tools and I'm trying to catch fish with my tools, you know? All right, well, that's it. I just want to take a minute and show you how I have my transducers installed. Again, very low. I know that, but we are fishing aggressively. We are running, we're using our electronics and we're using our outboard to find these open water fish. And 
because of that we need an aggressive installation you're going to get a rooster tail like i said the only downside is a rooster tail and you possibly hit debris but these have kick up brackets you know it can come up if, if it hits something if you feel uncomfortable going this low don't do it you could actually kit you know mount it level because when the boat comes up like i said earlier it'll drop this down so i'll go low keep it level if I'm getting air, if I'm not marking fish, I don't want to just track bottom, I want to see fish. If I'm not seeing my fish, I'll go ahead and lower the following edge down a touch. And that'll usually do it. If you lower it too far down, like see the angle here, and you're getting half arches, your fish arches only look like they're in half, then go ahead and raise it up a little bit. But that's it, I just want to take a second and show you how I do my installations. I know a lot of people can look at this and say, that's crazy, I would never do that, you're a lunatic. But they work for me, so I've always done it. And, uh, you know, just wanted to share that with you guys. Stay safe on the water. Leave a few for me. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. You guys are the best.